Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nari Hishmati. I'm a board certified OBGYN north of Seattle, Washington in the Everett area. And today I'm back at Muckleteo Beach near the lighthouse and I want to talk to you about immunizations or vaccinations in pregnancy. I get a lot of questions from patients on what immunizations or vaccinations do we recommend? Are they safe? Why do we do this? And to start off, I want to just talk about why do we do immunizations or vaccinations? And the idea with these are, these are basically shots that are meant to elicit an immune response in your body. Basically, the idea is your body is going to have some protection against these certain things that we're trying to protect against. Now, we pick vaccines based on something that's common in the area. Uh, it has to be something that is gonna be effective, meaning you know, the vaccine's gotta work, and it's gotta be something that we think is safe for both mom and baby. And there's some added benefits with some of the vaccines. So for instance, the Perdusis, the Tdap vaccine that we recommend in the third trimester of pregnancy, actually helps pass antibodies from the mom to the baby and provide some protection immediately after birth that we otherwise wouldn't have. Now we're going to kind of stay high level with a lot of this vaccine talk and so I want to split up vaccines into the two types there. are. There's live attenuated vaccines and then there's inactivated vaccines and the difference between the two. So live attenuated vaccines are like the measles vaccines, the MMR. That's where they actually they, they take a virus that's still alive and they go through a process to weaken it so that it's unlikely to make somebody sick and so it's going to elicit an immune response and your body's going to create some defenses against that. So for instance, in the MMR vaccine, the measles component from that, the strain of that virus actually came from a boy back in 1954 and that's the strain they still use today. Other examples of live attenuated vaccines are like the varicella, the chickenpox vaccine. Now, um, with our live attenuated vaccines, we don't recommend those in pregnancy. So uh, the idea is that we've never actually seen harm in these, but because they're actual live viruses, there's a theoretical risk. Now, I wouldn't worry if you got one and inadvertently didn't realize it and you were pregnant because we really haven't seen anything bad come from them. But that being said, just to be safe, we avoid them. And so the MMR, the measles, mumps, rubella is a live vaccine and so is the varicella, the chickenpox. These are two that we're going to recommend that if you know you're going to plan on getting a pregnancy soon, that you're going to get screened for these. And if you're not immune to them, that you're going to head and you're going to have this done beforehand, or we're going to recommend you do it after you deliver. Now, the other category of vaccines out there is the inactivated vaccines. So these are basically where they take a virus and uh, they heat it, or they take a capsule from a bacterium. They basically, they take something that can't actually cause the disease and it just causes your body to elicit an immune response. And what we're saying is by an immune response that your body is going to create defenses and mouth defenses. So if it ever encounters this, it's going to be protected. So your most common examples of this that we're going to do during a pregnancy are your influenza, your flu shot, uh, and your Tdap, your uh, tetanus diphtheria pertussis, basically the, the vaccine we give for whooping cough. And so where these are gonna be important, these are safe in pregnancy. And I get a lot of questions about could this lead to autism? Could this have a problem? The epidemiological data, meaning when they really look at the data and they take a deep dive in it, there's really been no association with autism with these vaccines. And again, we wouldn't recommend them if they weren't safe. When you take a look, for instance, at the flu vaccine, we're gonna recommend that every time we get it, every year in flu season, because that's essentially that vaccine is gonna be good for that year and it's gonna provide you protection. The flu is actually responsible for killing millions of people worldwide through history. So this is something that, you know, we think of and go, oh, you know, I don't want the flu shot. I never get the flu. Uh, you know, it's very, very important to get the flu vaccine. You can't get the flu from the flu vaccine. And, you know, we think of it as these cold-like symptoms, but it really can be life-saving, especially in a mom whose immune system is lowered because she's pregnant or in an infant. And a lot of times, if you contract something, or somebody in the household gets it, they can then give it to the baby later after birth. So that's something that we're gonna recommend each time. Now, with the Tdap, the diphtheria, uh, the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine, uh, in adults who've had a vaccination series, they're gonna recommend a booster every 10 years. Now, in pregnancy, we're gonna actually recommend, even if you're up to date, that you get the Tdap vaccine again in the third trimester, after 28 weeks. And the reason for that is, uh, it seems that moms mount a immune response that peaks around four weeks after getting that dose. So you get this vaccine, four weeks later, you've got your, your height of antibodies. 
those antibodies actually can cross the placenta and get to the baby. Where that's important is pertussis, which we think of as cold symptoms, you know, Bordetella pertussis, the bacterium that causes whooping cough, where when children inhale, you'll kind of hear a whoop. Well, with that, that can actually be lethal to babies. And, you know, 50% of babies that get sick are from household contacts. So this is where it's really critical. If a mom gets that vaccine, usually 28 plus weeks later, uh, it's gonna cross those antibodies to the placenta and the baby's gonna have some protection because we can't give the baby a vaccine until around two months of birth. So this is gonna be enormous. You know, prior to the pertussis vaccine being available in the United States, we had 10, 20,000 people had died from pertussis. So this was a really a game changer and an important thing. Um, fairies coming in now. So again, beautiful background that we've got got there uh, but so that's why we recommend the pertussis vaccine in the third trimester so people will often come in and say well I had one last pregnancy should I get it again we recommend it in the third trimester of every pregnancy because we're trying to provide some additional protection to the baby now in some cases if a mom tells me no no I'm not going to take the Tdap the pertussis vaccine I do encourage them to get it immediately postpartum and the reason is in those who are uh, breastfeeding uh, it can take about two weeks, but if you get the pertussis vaccine, you can build some immunity level that's going to cross to the baby. And so there's going to be some benefit there, but again, it's it's better and safer to get it in the third trimester. And, you know, I kid around that we were militant with our family um, when our kids were born. Everybody who visited needed to be up to date on all their vaccines because these are things that, you know, they're important. We don't see as much harm from these different viruses and bacterium and ailments out there because of the safety of vaccines. And sometimes that makes us forget um, what things can go wrong. And you know, these vaccines, they're safe, they're effective, and they really can make a difference. So I'd encourage you to sit down with your provider, talk about what vaccines are important and what you should get. If you're watching this from outside of the US, um, then there's gonna be some specific vaccines probably to your region. The CDC website, the Centers for Disease Control, is a great website that goes into a lot of this. So I'd encourage you to look into that. Thank you.